In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at all of the various ways that we can go about setting up loop regions within Studio One. Now, one of the first reasons that we may want to set up a loop region is for exporting our song. So we can see that in the top left corner here, within our ruler, we have a little triangle, and I can hover on this, and then we see we have double arrows up here, and I can left click hold and drag this out to extend it to the end of our song, I can come back to the left locator and pull this forward. So now when I press Control and E for our export song mix down, then we can see that this is going to be on between loop by default. So when we set this here by dragging, we're now going to set it up to be exported uh, for our final wave or MP3 file or any other option that we choose. But let's go ahead and cancel that out. Now I'm going to click to place the playhead cursor here around bar 5, and let's press E to zoom in, because I do want to mention that when you're using this method of dragging the locators, it will be affected by whether you have snap turned on or off, as well as the quantized value. So if I were to change this to quarter notes here, and our snap is turned on, now when I click this, we can see that that's snapping to quarter notes. If I were to switch to eighth notes, then as you can imagine, we snap to the eighth notes. And I'm sure you can also imagine if I were to turn the snap completely off, then I can freely place this wherever I'd like. So just be aware that your snap and quantize value are gonna affect when you're dragging the markers. Now I'm gonna press N to turn that snap back on and let's press W to zoom out a bit. And another way that we could set these locators is by using function keys. So if I were to hold control, notice when I move my mouse here to our ruler, we just see the background, but once I hold control, we'll see a vertical line pops up there. So I release control, but then when I hold it, we have this vertical line, and then once I click, then that's gonna set our left locator. Now if I come out to, let's just go pretty far out, bar 51, past our song, and I'm going to press Alt. Notice we don't see anything now, but as soon as I hold Alt, we have that vertical line up here. I can click once, and then our right locator will be set. And also take note that we started off with these locators kind of in this top left corner here, and I just left click and hold. We had the double arrows up here once I hovered on that marker. But if we'd like to change the position in a similar way, we can hover and we see that once we reach this lighter gray line, our arrow tool changes to the paint tool, and then I can left click hold to draw a new, new loop region in this way as well. Okay, now let's hop on over to another song. I'm gonna come up to the top right corner. Let's click on that icon there. Now another option that we have is if I were to click once to select this audio event, I can press P as in Paul, and that's gonna set our loop region there. Now let's press the forward slash to make that loop active so it's a bit more visible, and I'll press E to zoom in a bit. And so again, if I select this next region, I'll press P as in Paul, we can see our loop region. We'll then move to this selected audio event. Now for this third audio event here, we can see that it doesn't quite reach to this next bar. And if I were to select this and press P, then we can see that we are setting the loop region a little bit beyond the full length of this audio event. So when you're just using P, it's gonna kind of go to the next bar. If I wanted to specifically set the length of this audio event when it doesn't reach to the full or complete end or to the next bar, let's pull that back. Then I can, while it's selected, hold shift and press P, and then our loop region is gonna be set specifically to this length when it doesn't fall on the grid lines. Let's press W to zoom out a bit. Now we can automate this process a bit if we come to the ruler again and let's right click and we have loop follows selection. We can also use the shortcut keys, control, alt, and P. Also within a transport, if we right click on the loop active button, then we can see the same selection here, loop follow selection, I'll click once on that. And now when I select an event, we can see that our loop region is following its selection. And we can see here that this is actually going to be set to the specific length of this event, whereas when we were selecting and pressing P alone, it was going to the next grid line here. But I'm gonna go ahead and right click on our ruler again and take that off. And next in line, we have our loop location fields. So one for our left locator and one for our right locator. 
So we can see this first field is going to be for bar that says six, and we can see our left locator is on bar six. If I were to hover on this, let's actually again zoom out a bit. If I were to just hover on this first field and use my mouse wheel, scroll down, we then move that to bar five. We can see that that's that left locator has moved to bar five. If I come down to the next field, that's on seven. Let's mouse wheel up, and we can see that that moves to eight. We can then move this by beats. We can then move this by 16th notes, I believe. And then we have ticks. So just clicking and using the mouse wheel to change these. Also, if we were to left click and hold and drag, then we can change the location like so. Now, I'm not sure when this was added, but we also have a little bracket here that we can click on, and this is gonna change the display here, and we can set the length of our loop region. So we would first wanna position the start marker wherever we'd like it, say bar four, and this is currently set to seconds. So if I want to increase this, or let's decrease since we're zoomed in a bit. We're currently on 10 seconds. So this loop region is 10 seconds long. I can then just hover again with the mouse wheel, mouse wheel down, and we're gonna shorten that length to three seconds here. Okay, and we have different options here. So if I click on the downward facing arrow, I can change this to bars. And then this is three bars long. We can see that that matches if I mouse wheel up then we increase the length in bars. So you just have a few different settings here. If you want to set a specific length for your loop region after you've set the first left marker. Now our next option I can't fully display, but I'll describe, and that is we can position our playback cursor. I'll just click on bar eight, and then we can press Alt plus one on the numeric keypad, and that's gonna set the left locator. I don't have a numeric keypad at the moment, but just know that that's available. And we can then come over to say bar 10. And if you press Alt plus two, number two again on the numeric keypad, that's gonna set your right locator. Now let's bring this loop region into bar eight. And the final thing that I wanna mention is that we can move this loop region forward and back. So I have some shortcut keys set up for that and I'm gonna make use of those now. So what I've done is set shift and the forward arrow, the arrow above the period, and if I hold shift and use the left facing arrow, I can then move this loop region back. So we keep the same length, length of this loop region, uh, but making use of those keys, I can move it forward or back, and if you would like to set up your own shortcut key, let's shift and F to exit out of full screen mode and we'll come over to Studio One. Let's come down to the keyboard shortcuts. I'll type in loop. And then we can see here we have shift loop and that this is the arrow that I'm talking about that I assigned to it. Okay, and then we have shift loop backwards, which is the left facing arrow. So these are gonna be blank by default, but I just selected and then chose enter key and put in the keys that I wanted to use. So you can do the same if you feel like this function may be useful for you. Okay, so that's been a look at the many different ways that we can go about setting our loop region within Studio One. I hope this has been useful. And I also do provide one-on-one -on -one training over Zoom. So if you're struggling to get started with Studio One or you are an intermediate or an advanced user who is struggling with different features or Studio One functionality, or if you're interested in learning more about mixing, check out the pinned comment below or the description area of this video. And I also offer mixing and mastering services, and you can find more information about that as well in the pinned comment or description area. Okay guys, thanks for watching and we'll wrap up here. I hope to see you in the next tutorial.